Hey guys, it's me again. Um, as you can see, I've, I've made some new changes to my channel, and also, um, sorry for uh, leaving you guys for um, so long. Just got really bored of it, and I, I had some family problems, but it's okay now. I'm all okay. So we're gonna go back to Ink Benny times the reader. Yeah, that's all what y'all have been uh, requesting. As you can see, my stutter was isn't as bad as the last time I made a video. So, that's good. So, we're reading Ink Bendy Times Reader, Alone Within the Ink. Uh, we're, we're reading, I think, Chapter 10. Uh, as you can see, uh, same drill now. It's by uh, Mass Dragon 533. She's the one who makes this. I haven't read this book in so long. I haven't even finished either. Eh, let's just go into the video. I'll see y'all at the end. Bye! When the two of you got back from Bendyland, you've been watching movies ever since. You watch whatever came on the next current channel. Neither of you minded, though. At least, that's what you thought. The last few movies you guys watched had to deal with romance and dancing. Bendy originally hadn't minded at all that too much that he was watching romance movies, but everything changed when he saw how love-struck you were when the characters fell in love and shared a dance. He saw the longing in your eyes, and he knew. Cue his current uncomfortable feeling. Those movies also ended the cuddling. When the movie finished an hour later, he yawned with a stretch. I should probably make dinner. He smiled, glancing at Bendy. He nodded quickly before rushing off into another room. He knew something had been up. He was so lively and happy in Bendyland as well as during the first few movies. However, his change in demeanor didn't slip past you. He grew quiet and motionless, and you noticed him sheepishly rubbing the back of his neck rather often. He seemed uncomfortable and sort of embarrassed, to say the least. Bendy didn't even want to cuddle anymore. Maybe he senses something? You ask, turn off the TV. I hope he's alright. You walked into the kitchen, not bothering to check up on him. You don't want to make him feel worse, or even make him upset. Vendi would talk to you when he was ready. You began to prepare the dinner in which the main ingredient was, of course, bacon soup. You didn't exactly mind the stuff, but you couldn't deny you're starting to get sick of it. Nonetheless, into the mixture it went! A half hour... A half hour passed and you pulled the meal out of the oven. Steaming hot and ready to go, you placed the dish into the center of the table. You also put a plate, fork, and napkin at your seat. Bendy didn't need any silverware or utensils, however. You always absorbed the metal to his ink. That's the reason why bacon soup was all over the place. Liquids are the easiest from the soak up. You walked back into the main room and the lounge, immediately halted with a quiet gasp. A handful of candles were placed around the room, slightly illuminating the room with a gorgeous mixture of reds, oranges, and yellows. A radio playing, soothing music was placed on the table, which had been over to the side. But to top it all off was the demon himself. Satan! <laughs> no, just kind of just fun. Bendy stood there with his ex internal smile and all, dressed in a dashing tuxedo. The black fabric of silk sparkled in the candlelight, and his white bow see time <clears throat> seemed to not only be clean, but appeared to be rather well new. Rather new as well. His pants sparkled along with the blazer, and he was wearing his infamous, infamous shiny shoes. You're beginning to tear up slightly, and he slowly approached you. He bowed and held out a large rose for you, 
whose precious stem was wrapped in a napkin. He gently took the rose into her delicate fingers as tear began to spill more. Oh, Bendy, <laughs> he smiled. He took the napkin off the rose's stem and used it to carefully wipe away your tears. Stuffing it to his blazer pocket, he held out his hand to you. You happily accepted it and placed your hand in his, and he led you to the center of the room. He held your hand in his, looking at you as the music softly died off. In the, sort, in the short silence, second of silence, you saw him tapping his foot along to the beat that wasn't even there. However, you knew him enough to, have, to know he had a secret up his sleeve, so he prepared to dance any moment. The music suddenly came back playing an upbeat tempo that had matched perfectly with Bendy's tapping foot. He had known exactly what song had been about to play. Can't be erased. Although it was the instrumental version, he danced, danced all around the room with you as you followed suit with a bright smile. You were completely amazed at his dancing skills. Sure, he was Bendy the Dancing Demon, but you only quite ever seen him dance in the hands of an animator. It was quite a sight to see him dancing by all, all by himself of his own free will without having to follow the friends of an animator. Bendy had exponential speed when it came to moving his feet, and he had some of the quickest turns you have ever seen. As he was moving his feet along the ground, you... He always had plenty of fluid hand and arm motions to match. Bendy also had some rather professional moves up his sleeve as well. He was a dancing natural. You laughed as he twirled and dipped you. This felt absolutely amazing. Is this what everyone felt like when they danced with the one they loved? Is this how the characters feel in movies? You couldn't believe this is happening! You're dancing around the ink monster who not only loved, but loved you back in return. You were human, and he was a cartoon character. Yet, as the two of you glided along the ground in sync, you couldn't be more similar. Hipped, he dipped you as the music cut out abruptly, yet he, st he still held the form. Wow, he said breathlessly. I mean, I, I knew you were good... You're a dancing demon, but I didn't know you were that good. Bendy pulled you back up to your feet as he confidently flashed his bow tie. He then went, walked over to the radio and messed around with the, but the buttons and knobs. After getting past the silence and occasional static, he eventually managed to successfully get the radio to resume playing music. However, this time it played the slow song. Bendy came back to you and did a, didn't hesitate to loosely place his hands on your hips. You smiled with a slight blush as you reached up and wrapped your arms around his neck. You looked up at him, lovingly, a warm smile on your face, while he looked down at you. The two of you began to sway to the music. I'm sorry. You suddenly spoke up, although keeping your voice soft and gentle after minutes among, of comfortable silence. Bendy tilted his head in confusion, which let you know you could continue. I left you alone for so long. You kneeled slightly and cupped your face softly in his hands. You placed your hands on his as he shook his head. I know, I know, he smiled. It's not my fault, but not only were you scared, I was also missing out on the greatest potential of my life at the same time. By now, the two of you had sunk to your knees on the ground, and the radio had cut out again. You reached up and carefully curled your fingers around his arms, stroking them. I could care less what you are. It doesn't matter if you're a cartoon character, or a demon, or a creature made of ink. You stopped touching his horns and gently moved his hand away from, from your face, so you can hold his hands in yours. No matter what anyone sees... And no matter how you see yourself, I will only see what's truly inside. I can see every ounce of love and compassion and kindness hiding within all that ink. There's never an ink monster and there never will be. There will only ever be a loving gentleman whom I will, lo 
I will be with for the rest of my life. You watch something clear roll down Bendy's cheek. It was an ink, rather a tear. You wiped it away and delicately placed your hands on his cheeks. Leaning in, you placed a soft kiss on his eternal smile and held it there. When you pulled away, Bendy instantly pulled you into a tight hug. He buried his face into your neck as much as he could without having such a large head. And you returned the loving squeeze. You giggled when you soon felt something damp on your skin. And Bendy placed ink hard kisses along your neck, letting each kiss linger slightly before moving on to the next one as he's made his way up. He left ink hearts along your jawline, then pressed two against the corner of your lips, which were curved upwards into a smile. You googled his touch and been p- and his <sighs> and he began to play with your hair. He then stood up and took you with him, holding you bridal style. And then placed you onto the couch. He went to the kitchen and heated up the meal, bringing it back to you. He sat down and pulled you into his lap, massaging your hips with soft squeezes and as you ate your dinner. He hummed in content as you ate, while Bendy rested his head on your shoulder. You're human, and he was cartoon character. Yet, as the two of you sat here in silence, you can be more in love. Alright guys, this is the end of the video. I might be doing another one, like right after this recording, but I'll publish this first. Or maybe I'll just, uh... Just publish another day. I know you guys probably want me to publish right away, but... Eh. Oh, yeah. I've been watching these channels I really love and really... Uh, yeah, you guys, um, check it out. There's this uh, channel named Slimesicle. I really like it. It's really funny and... He says puns, and I like puns. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see y'all later. Oh yeah, um, now that I changed my uh, name, uh, y'all can call me Galaxy or um, or just random. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see y'all later. Bye.